the last decade of cloud was really about uh, sort of virtualization and pay-per-use pricing mechanisms and some things around that, we're entering a new era, which is an era of large-scale geographically dispersed computing, which has all sorts of challenges associated with it. So, you know, there's the CAP theorem, right, um, around consistency and availability and partition tolerance. Um, I showed uh, a few months ago, uh, there's a proof I put online that, uh, for those of you that are hardcore CS types, that uh, cloud computing demand satisfiability is NP complete. In other words, the simple problem of having dispersed users with um, demand that needs to be served by dispersed nodes is actually very challenging and can't be solved perfectly. And since those, uh, those demands are actually time varying, it makes the problem even more complex. So it doesn't take just until the end of the universe to solve the problem perfectly. You know, every second you create another till the end of the universe right. to solve right. perfectly problem. Yeah, I think I'm even as Simon was alluding to, I mean, we're, we really are moving into a world of whether we call it hybrid cloud, I prefer like connected clouds, uh, but it is a world of many clouds. And so applications uh, to have the kind of reliability and availability are going to be distributed over multiple data centers. At the same time, we're seeing because of uh, data sovereignty issues and things like that, different clouds being geographically located where they're under in a different country, for example, so that you can have that. So I, I think that's going to change the application design as well. We've gone from sort of a tradition, you know, web 2.0 applications have been built. And in the networking world, actually, what that's driving is a lot of east-west traffic within a data center itself, as opposed to the north-south traffic, which smaller applications have. And now when we go the second step and we're distributing that over multiple data centers, it becomes even more important than for us to understand really what those things are. And we, you know, the laws of physics, and uh, you've written about, actually, you have a new, new law, I think, uh, which is, you know, really talking about the latencies involved. How far away are you? So we've traditionally solved that with CDNs. We have to really start taking that into account when we're designing these applications. And I think we're also looking at the fact that, that it's really being dominated by data. And so that we're actually, I believe we're going to start to see, just like there's been a lot of talk about fabric computing, where we're sort of merging uh, computing, storage, and networking into a single kind of fabric, that the data will be, you know, the dominant, you know, attribute there, because it's going to be far easier oftentimes to move applications than it is to move large data sets. And if you look at genomics or any of the very, very large data sets, that's pure, really what we're going to be about. So where the application is at any point in time is going to be actually hard to predict because there'll be multiple copies of the application running and that they're going to be geographically dispersed. And even though in a human time scale, I think some of the latencies that we see, you know, may be acceptable, except when you're trying to stream things, uh, for machine to machine communication, it's going to become a real issue. And so I think we're going to see a tremendous new opportunities for how do you place applications, be close to the user, to be close to the data, and, and making that kind of trade-off. Even though it may be MP complete, but I think that you right. know, we, there are good enough solutions, and exactly. I think that this next year we're going to see a, a lot of progress yeah. in that area. The new architecture will be a balance of both you know, all of these layers working together harmo harmoniously and seamlessly in an intelligent fashion. You know, my challenge, I think, to the network service providers is to create more intelligent network capabilities with greater flexibility accessible via an API. I'd like to see bandwidth on demand, QoS on demand, uh, routing control, uh, things like any cast routing, things like your network positioning yeah, system. Yeah. Um, so things that really help optimize this, especially as you look at the relative cost trends for all of these different components.